done with the show all right now. We've got two more comments left. Let's get this energy back in here. This next guy, Nick Ways, all over the city. Let's hear it for Bill Stella. Guest Major D, Stevie Wonder, for seating the room this evening. <laughs> for those of you who can actually see the stage from your seats, uh, you may or may not recognize me, but I uh, have done quite a bit of extra work in uh, movies and television recently. I got to be an extra on The Sopranos during our last season. Very big thrill for me. Uh, I got to uh, sit at the bar at the Bada Bing Club and pretend to drink alcohol and look at topless girls for like four hours. It's quite a stretch for me. <laughs> uh, brilliant performance on my part. And when the shoot was done, they told me the compensation was going to be $75. You know, I thought that was fair, so I paid it. <laughs> uh, you're probably wondering, well, Bill, did I give you real alcohol at the bottom of the club? No, unfortunately, the, uh, the booze is fake, but I feel that's only appropriate because so are most of the boobs on the dancers. <laughs> of course, the big difference between fake boobs and fake booze is you can still have a pretty good time with fake boobs. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I haven't always been a stand-up comedian. Maybe you can tell. I uh, used to have a regular job. Then one day the boss came in and he asked me to send him an email when I was finished working on this project. Unfortunately, I thought he said send him a she-mail, you know? What the fuck did I know? Maybe that's how he likes to celebrate a completed project. I don't work there anymore. But uh, last I heard, they were still together. Now, you can call me old-fashioned if you like, but she-mails really fascinate me. If girls a pretty face, nice tits, and a cute ass, who might have let a little thing like a penis stand in the way? Now, if you really think about it, there's lots of advantages of dating a she-mail. It's never her time in a month. No PMS. That's a plus. Or maybe not. You probably don't have to beg her that much to get her to have anal sex with you. Not a good thing. <laughs> if she moves in, she's probably already gotten to his and her towels. <laughs> oh, and I think the best thing is that uh, as far as a threesome goes, you know, you have that pretty much with just the two of you. I have been looking for a 9-to-5 job for quite some time now and have not had much luck like most people, but I think maybe I'm doing something wrong. Tell me, am I supposed to leave the flask in my pocket during the whole interview, no matter how long it goes? Because after about 10 minutes, I usually get a little thirsty. Now, believe it or not, I've been invited back for a few second interviews, which I took to be a good sign, but no. Turns out they just wanted to verify how much they hated me the first time I met them. <laughs> Did they really expect me to be honest on these interviews? This is a question I like to ask a lot now. What do you think your biggest weakness is? What was that? What do you think your biggest weakness is? And uh, am I really going to tell them that I like to call in sick when I'm really just hungover? <laughs> Let them find that out on their own. <laughs> One guy wanted to know if I was uh, bilingual. I said, why? What country is this job taking place in? <laughs> I said, uh, I'm only unilingual, sir, but I'm bi-curious if that helps. <laughs> It didn't. And every time you go on another interview, you got to fill out another application. Oh, it's unbelievable. This was on an application a few weeks back. There's three references. Cannot be friends, family, or co-workers, past or present. Well, who the hell is left? Finally, I thought about it and I put down my bartender, my drug dealer, and the local hooker. <laughs> so far, they haven't called me, but uh, the hooker tells me that the guy that took my application is a pretty big tipper. <laughs> but uh, I've been trying everything, you know, I even went to a uh, job fair a few weeks back and that was a waste. There were no rides. <laughs> I, even, uh, I even looked on Craigslist, you know, my buddy said there's lots of job offers there and uh, he was right, but uh, all the offers I found were for hand jobs and blow jobs. Don't get me wrong, those are good jobs to get. I'm just not so sure they offer any type of medical insurance. <laughs> I'm at a point in my life where medical insurance is very important because I have an expectant mother at home. Thank you for the applause. <laughs> but it's probably not what you think anyway. It's just that my mom lives with me and she really, she really expects a lot. <laughs> anyway, um, I was over at the Applebee's in Times Square last week. I don't know if you guys have been there, but it's a real big one. They have three different floors. I guess you could say it's a restaurant that sucks on many different levels. <laughs> <laughs> I was there a 
for a few minutes, and I told the waitress I needed to go to the bathroom. She said, okay, go down and a little to the right. Now, I almost always go down, and plus I'm aroused, but usually a little to the left. I tried it her way, and it really wasn't too much difference. I just had to dry off the other shoe for a change. But uh, while I was in the men's room, I noticed they had a baby changing table in there. Now, is that where you go to exchange your baby if you're not happy with it? Oh, no, I know. I'm kidding. That's what I do. I know what it's for. But what struck me about this particular table is, next to the brand name, there's a little sign in Braille. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I very rarely see a blind man in the men's room changing a baby. <laughs> all right, in all fairness, he doesn't see me either. Uh, speaking of the blind, uh, New York's Governor Patterson uh, is not doing too well. His uh, approval rating is at an all-time low. You know, maybe in uh, retrospect, his predecessor wasn't so bad after all. I'm sure we remember him. He was forced to resign because he was spending thousands of dollars on a prostitute. I think we were a little too harsh on him, though, because if anybody should have seen a hooker, it was him. The guy's wife's name was Mrs. Spitzer. <laughs> you know, had it been Mrs. Swallower, he probably would have stayed home all the years. Getting back to Governor Patterson for that, uh, he is the first legally blind governor of New York. I think there were a few who were legally dumb, but I'm not positive. But speaking of dumb, if you recall, very shortly after Patterson was sworn in, he insisted on confessing to having numerous affairs while married to his wife. I guess the uh, ladies he had the affairs with really enjoyed going on blind dates. <laughs> oh. but, uh, at least we don't have to worry about spending thousands of dollars on a prostitute, though, because I think, as we all know, you can get them a lot cheaper if you don't care what they look like. <laughs> but I kid him. I kid Governor Patterson. He seems like a nice fellow. In fact, I just ran into him at the uh, bathroom at Applebee's last week, changing the baby. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't see me, though. <laughs>